Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. This is where I take a particular trick, a deep dive into a particular trick or a creator or a company or a product, and I tell you exactly what I think about it. And today, I'm going to be talking about JB Magic. I'm going to talk about the always awesome Mark Mason. Now, Mark Mason is a legend as far as I'm concerned. He's one of the best things that's ever happened to Magic. And if you've ever been to a Magic convention, that Mark Mason is at, you will know that his booth is just always busy. He sells out his stuff after one day and then goes home. Uh, he has a knack of bringing out tricks that are super high quality, super awesome, super amazing, and just inspire and in, just create intrigue with anybody who walks past his booth. And I've said this a million times. The amount of times that I've walked past my, uh, Mark Mason's booth and I've been hypnotized into talking to him. And then five minutes later, I'm walking away with a bunch of stuff. And I've got no idea why I bought them. But I, I believe that the best purchases that I've ever had. He has this ability to do that to people. Luckily, he always delivers. His stuff is always really good. Now, at Blackpool, um, this year, uh, he had uh, three new tricks. Uh, and, and a fourth trick that came out, Blackpool 2022, sold out within 15 minutes. And then kind of... Bought it out again for Blackpool 2023. Now, I'm going to review three of these four products. I'm not going to review the pen thing. Uh, that's going to be going on a Craig and Ryan review show because Ryan desperately wanted to be included in that review because he really likes it. So that's going to be coming on a future Craig and Ryan review show. Uh, however, this video is going to be about the three other products that Mark bought out and exactly what I think about them. You're going to see live performances of all three of the tricks. So without further ado, it's time to get started. Let's get into this week's review show special. So first up, we're going to talk about the Shelby wallet. So the Shelby wallet was created by Gaz Lawrence and uh, has been marketed through JB Magic. What is the Shelby wallet? Now, the Shelby wallet is a peak wallet. That is what it does. And that is all. It is not one of those all singing, all dancing wallets that does absolutely everything like the Nexus wallet or the Orphic wallet. It is literally a peak wallet. Now, before I go any further into this review, I know there is some controversy surrounding the Shelby wallet and surrounding Gaz's name and and, and 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 that's fine and that's cool. I'm not going to address that. This is a review show. I'm not going to talk about the originator of the trick. I'm not going to talk about anything like that. I'm just going to review the trick for what it is and what it does and whether I like it or not. Those debates can be had on a different video at a different time, but this is not the video for those debates. So, what is the Shelby wallet? It is a peak wallet, okay? Now, Mark will tell you that this is one of the best peak wallets that he's ever seen, and I am inclined to agree with him. Uh, there's a lot of pros to the Shelby wallet, and one of the big pros is the fact that you can get the peak so quickly. Like, you can literally put the, put the, um, put the wallet on the person's hand, move it to the other hand, and in the action of moving it from one hand to the other, you can get the peak. You can get them to put the wallet down on the table. You can literally just lift up the wallet fractionally to show them and say, hey, remember, you know, you can blah, 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 whatever you want to do. And in that action, you've got the peak. Like the peak is incredibly easy to get and the wallet is very well made. Now, the other thing about the wallet is it looks like a more modern, thin style wallet. It's not like a, 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 a um, you know, like, you, you know, like the peak looked by Mr. Blonde. I mean, obviously that was terrible, but you know, that was designed to look like a very modern stylistic wallet. This isn't designed to look like that, but it is a very thin wallet. It is a very minimalistic wallet compared to the old JOL style big bulky wallets. This is a lot smaller. It's a lot thinner. It carries a lot less stuff. You could use this as your everyday wallet if you wanted to. You can put some business cards in there. You can put a real, a uh, couple of real credit cards in there. There's a space to put your money. It will operate as a real wallet. Um, but it has an incredible peak built into it. It actually has a couple of different ways of doing the peak. I'm going to show you a performance of this to Matt so you can have a look at it in action. Once you've had a look at the performance, and I'm just doing a very simple name reveal here. But once we've done that, I'm going to come back and uh, and, and tell you exactly what I think of the So um, this is mind reading. I know you didn't get over to Mark's stand, but this is, this is, you would like this. This is your sort of thing. Um, I'm going to give you a business card. If I can get it out. There we go. Help. 
there we go. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to think of um, the first person that you kissed. First girl you kissed. But I'm assuming a girl. It could be a boy. Uh, could be a dog. Do dogs count? Yeah. It was a dog then? It has to be a passionate kiss. Oh, then it wasn't a dog. That's <laughs> to say. They're not, they're not Louis Barnes. It was Bonnie. <laughs> no, that's imagine. sheep break. Because like, that was my mum and dad's dog when I was born. Okay. Um, passionately kiss. Okay. Yeah. Oh God, what was the name? Uh, We're looking at me. So yeah, should many, I know? So many no, women. It's not, I was a He's kid. a rock star. He travels the world in spandex. I was a kid, like early teenager. Okay. Um, yeah, I think. I, yeah. I, think I, I bet you're a cool kid. It's not like she watches this anyway. So. I bet you're a cool kid. I did alright. Yeah. Not a geek like me and Jack. Uh, no, I wasn't clever enough to be a geek. <laughs> <Do you? laughs> I know. Um, put the name, the first name in there, and okay. then and then just show it to uh, the camera so that I can't see, and then turn it over. Oh, I will look away. I'm yeah. pretty sure this was her name. So when you're done. Yeah, done. Can we show them? Yeah, go for it. Why not? Get them in on the action. Okay. Yeah. I'll take the pen back. And just so I can't see anything or know what's going to go on, uh, we're just going to pop it away in my wallet, if that's okay. Okay. Now, are you right or are you left-handed? Right. Perfect. Uh, hold up both hands, palm up. We'll start here. I want to concentrate. Concentrate. Just concentrate. Can you yeah. do that for me? Just concentrate. I can try. <laughs> do you remember what this person uh, looks like, yeah? You remember what the person yeah. looks like? You remember what they look like? Yeah. So I want you to imagine that you've got a cinema screen in front of you right here. Okay. And the person that you're thinking of is on the cinema screen. Okay. Imagine how they, they, they were quite shorter than you, weren't they? But yes. Yes. Hair color, was it was it blonde? No. Brunette? Yes. Yeah. Uh, quite long though. Mm. As in like shoulder length? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I can see them clearly, but we need the name. Think of the first letter. Go with me. Think of the first. <laughs> fuck off. Think of the first. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm trying to engage there in brown mode here. <laughs> Think of the first letter. Yeah. Of the name. Imagine the name's written in neon. What colour is the neon? Uh, pink. Ah, uh, that tells me she was a Virgo. Is that right? How am I? I don't know. Well, like... trust me, she was. Uh, think of the <laughs> think of the first letter. I'd like to just turn teenager. I don't know. She was a Virgo. She was a Virgo. Okay, I'll believe it. Imagine how you felt when you saw her. Oh, okay. Don't do that. You'll get horny. Um, <laughs> I was panicking. Think, think of the first letter. <laughs> think of the first letter. Imagine that shining biter. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's a K, isn't it? It's a K. Yeah. Yeah, it's a K. Think of a, think of a letter in the middle of the word. Yeah. Oh, interesting. You went straight for an L, didn't you? You went straight for an L. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a short name. Like five or six letters. Not a long name. Yeah? Yeah. I got it. Kelly. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Do you remember her surname? No. It was Smith. <laughs> that was? No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. I can see it there. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was Smith. No, it wasn't. Go and connect with her on Facebook and say, oh. hey, snogging was great. By the way, what's no your surname? I what her surname was. Well, so how am I going to find her on Facebook? Trust a professional mind reader. Well, how do you know it's not Smith then, if you can't remember? Because it wasn't. It, it wasn't. wasn't that. It, was. it, it was wasn't. Smith. It was Smith. It definitely wasn't. It definitely was. It wasn't because her was mate Rachel was called Rachel Smith, and yeah, she didn't have the same surname. Oh, so you can so only it have it. It wasn't Rachel. It was Smith. It was Smith. So um, there you go. That's the performance. And as you can see, Matt was suitably impressed, as I hoped he would be. And there's a lot of things to love about this wallet. Genuinely, there is. So the wallet itself, you can, as as you saw in the performance, you can take a business card out, get somebody to write something on it. You can put it into the wallet, and um, and and as you can see, it looks like it really is going into one of the outside pockets and you can show it all the way around at that point and and the peak happens in literally one second so you can put the wallet on the table and just lift up that you can lift up the wallet and say so remember you could have you know you could have thought of anything right and in that action i'm looking directly at it i can get the peak as i put the wallet away I, m one of my favorites is what i did to matt which is moving the wallet from one hand to the other that works really well as well but the peak you can get in a split second now um it opens automatically and once it opens it closes and then you can immediately kind of show it um the other aspect to it without giving too much away there's a there's a mirror built into the wallet as well now that's no good for words but if you're doing a drawing duplication you can actually barely even lift it and the mirror 
will allow you to see everything immediately. Now, you wouldn't want to use that for a word because it reversed the word. For a drawing, it's fantastic. Now, most of, uh, most of the performances that Mark Mason does on the tutorials or most of the explanations involve having somebody there with him. Uh, sorry, involve him being on his own. But in this situation, Gaz Lawrence is with him on the tutorial and goes through everything with Mark. So the two of them together explain. Uh, Gaz is, comes across as very knowledgeable. So does Mark. There are times where they're kind of almost talking over each other. Um, uh, and I think that's because they've never been on camera together. But they get all the information across. Absolutely 100%. Uh, there's no stone being left unturned. Gaz does a full performance of the trick and does it very, very well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It looks like a very thin wallet. There's multiple ways to get the peak. It's very well made. It looks like it's going to last a very long time. The space to put all your regular stuff if you want to use it as a regular card to wallet. I'll be honest with you. This is not going to replace my regular uh, everyday carry wallet, which is an Orphic wallet. I have two Orphic wallets. One as my regular everyday carry, and I also have one that I take to gigs. It's not going to replace either of those because I don't do peaking that much. I'm not a mentalist. I do card to wallet more than I do peaking. So because I do card to wallet, the fact that the Orphic wallet has the card to wallet function built in, it has the no palm card to wallet function built in, it also has the switch thing built in so I can switch objects on the outside of the wallet it means that uh, uh, it means that that has more functionality for me as a magician however I am going to take this around with me and play around with it as a peak it doesn't take up hardly any pocket space I can throw it in the same pocket as the Orphic wallet and it's not going to bolt my wallet to, uh, my pockets up anymore it takes up hardly any space so I do think I'm going to take it out and play around with it now in my stage show I do have multiple different places where I'm actually getting a peek of some information for one thing or another. And in that situation, I really love the idea of using this. I think this is a really smart wallet. I think this is one of the, the easiest ways to get a peek that I've seen. There's so many convoluted wallets that aren't really that good. This is really good. Um, and uh, you, know, you know that. I mean, Mark Mason doesn't put his name to anything that's tat. This is really good. So I'm going to give this... 98%. I think this is a great wallet. I think it's really well made. I thought the tutorial was good. The performances were good. I think that uh, anybody who buys it wanting a peek will not be disappointed. And the price is amazing. The price, it's really cheap compared to the cost of a lot of other wallets. The price is really cheap. So the Shelby wallet, very, very good. Really, really awesome. Absolutely 100% um, recommended. Let's move on to the next product. So next up, we have digital. Now, what is digital? Well, digital is a gaffed card. And what it allows you to do, basically, is it allows you to show what looks like almost like a digital image. So it's a playing card. It's got a normal red back, but on the face, it's got a digital image, a little bit like an alarm clock, that sort of image. And it allows you to shake it and it allows you to change it into a different image. So it shows six of spades and you can change it into four of hearts. And it, you can do it with the face to the camera very, very visually. I'm going to show you a performance of this. I did a performance to Matt, so I'm going to show you a performance of this. And then we'll talk about what we think. Yeah. Check this out. Uh, I'm going to show you the difference between magic and mentalism. Okay. Okay. So mentalism is making predictions. Inside there, I've got a prediction from a red back deck. Okay. Okay. And I also have a blue back deck of cards, 52 cards. They're all there. They're all different. 52 cards, 52 possibilities. Exactly. I'm going to give the cards a shuffle. And your job, my friend, is as I cut packets of cards onto the table, anytime you want to, just say stop. Stop. Oh, there. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Went a bit wrong at the end, but <laughs> is that okay? Yeah? Yeah, cool. Great. Have a look at that card. Remember it. Don't forget it. <clears throat> you got it? Yeah. And then pop it back in the middle. We're going to lose it in the middle. Because that's what magicians do, don't they? They have cards picked and they lose them. It makes you wonder why. If they, uh, if they wanted them so badly, why did they lose them? I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and cut to your card. You ready? Watch this. <coughs> Show my skills now. I'm going to do a butterfly cut. So when you cut like that, 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 and like that. There you go. Okay. Like that. Uh, and I managed to cut to one card and one card only. The six of spades. Hold on. That's magic. Is it? Yeah, of course. I cut to your card. That wasn't my card. Wasn't it? Are you sure? <laughs> Damn. 
Great, great, great. You fucked something up. One, once again. Um, <laughs> it wasn't the six, no? No. See, that makes the mentalism rubbish as well, because what I did is, to back up the uh, the magic, I actually put a card, and it said six of spades. So it wasn't the six of spades. <laughs> no. Okay, what was your card? Uh, what was it, Jack? Four, Four hearts. hearts. Four hearts. Four hearts. Okay, so you see where it says six of spades? Yeah. Watch this. If I do this, that's real magic. Now it turns into the four of hearts. <laughs> and if it turns into the four of hearts, that means if I flick the six of spades that you picked, now that's the four of hearts as oh, well. Oh, wow, that's cool. That is digital. That's so, yeah, that's, the, uh, that's, that's digital. That's exactly what it is. Now, when you get it out of the box, the tutorial is very short. It has to be short because it's self-working. You literally, within 10 seconds of buying the trick, you're going to know exactly how it works and you're going to be able to do it every single time. I've been using it now for a few days and it works like a charm. It works really, really good. Um, great for social media, but also great for gigs. It looks great. Now, you also get a regular card as well and you get a double backer. And there's a couple of routines that you learn. The first routine is basically the routine that I performed for you, which is a great routine, but the card's not examinable at the end. The second version involves a switch using the double backer in the regular card. So when you've done the move, you can then hand them the card and everything's copus mentis and everything's fine. And the double backer makes that very, very easy to do. And that's what I love about Mark's material. Um, he thinks of everything, to be perfectly honest. Now, I think this is great for a few different types of people. It's great for people who um, uh, are on social media. Ryland's already put it on his Instagram. It's great for um, uh, uh, magicians who maybe haven't got much skill with a pack of cards. Somebody like Matt. Matt's great, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't know much sleight of hand with a pack of cards. But he's going out gigging. He wants to be able to do visual stuff. He doesn't know many colour changes, if any, at the moment. So being able to do something like that, and it will give you more... It will make it look more skillful than it actually is, if that makes sense. For me, personally, I'm not going to do this. And the reason I'm not going to do this is just because I can do the same thing with a with a snap change or with a a shapeshifter or something like that. I can think about it. I can have somebody pick a card, no force. I can have it lost into the pack, apparently. I can then have them pick a different card. Is that your card? No. I can then come up here, shake it or snap it, and it changes. I can give it to them. And in many ways, that's just as good as what digital is. Now, don't get me wrong. That does not mean that digital is a bad trick. It's not. It does exactly what it's made to do. It's very easy to operate. You can do it within five seconds. Thea was doing it. Thea wants to jump on Ryland's Instagram and do it because even she can do this trick. And it's fun to play with. It's got that fun factor. You look at it and you go, oh, look, it's changed. Oh, look, it's changed. Oh, look, it's changed. This is super fun. It is a really fun trick. And I honestly think that anybody who gets it won't be disappointed. Because if you watch the trailer or you watch Mark demonstrate it and you see a card changing into another card, that's what you're going to get. You even get to learn a way to actually hand it out for examination at the end. It's fantastic. And I thought long and hard about whether I'd do it. And honestly, I don't think I would. I think what would happen is I'd take it to a gig, I'd forget to do it, I'd end up doing the stuff with a regular deck and it wouldn't get done. The only place that I think that I might end up doing this is if I did it in a multiple selection. So at some point, I forced the four of hearts on somebody uh, and I was having 10 people picking cards, but one of them got forced to four of hearts in the middle, and I have the cards put back, and I'm doing a multiple selection, finding the cards one at a time, and I get to that person's card, and I go, I've got your card in my pocket. I even predicted it. Look, I, I, six of spades, was that your card? No, what was your card? Four of hearts. Oh, that one? Look at that. Anyway, let's move on. And I've put it away, and it's just this incredible moment that I could do very, very quickly before I move on to the next person's card. So the only place that I would personally do this is in a multiple selection selection routine but I'm stuck in my ways and I've got a multiple selection routine that works so I probably wouldn't even do it there but I think for experienced workers it would work in that sort of environment if you are a sleight of hand god if you are a Michael Vincent if you are a Kyle Purnell if you are anybody like that I don't see why you'd want to do this I think that the power of this trick is for somebody uh, to come in who's got maybe not as much skill with a pack of cards as other people but you're going to be able to do something incredible that looks like you more have more skill than you actually have. 
Matt, afterwards, when I did the performance, I showed him this and he's like, oh my God, that's amazing. I want to be able to do that. So I'm probably going to give it to Matt because Ryland doesn't want to do it either. He's putting it. He said, yeah, give it me for social media. He wanted to do it on Instagram. Now it's gone on Instagram. He's like, yeah, okay, I'm done with it now. Thanks, Dad. But Matt loves it. He wants to do it. He wants to put it in his show. And I know he would make a big thing out of this, doing walk around, taking it out, doing this. I think he'd make a big deal of it. And that's what I want to put across. This is not a bad trick. This is a really good trick that allows you to change a card right there. It's also super visual. It's also super easy to do. It resets. There's no pocket space. It goes in the envelope. You're ready to do it again. You can go back and forth between the six and the four. You can have it examined at the end. This hits so many plus points. It's just not for me. I'm giving it 79%, which is the highest rating I can give something if I'm not going to do it. But I don't want to lie to you guys. I'm not going to do this routine. I'm not going to do this trick. I think it's great. I think for the right person, this would be worth its weight in gold. But for me, it's not, it's not going to go into my act. So 79% from me, but it is a really good trick. Okay, so the final routine that I'm going to be looking at today is a coin trick. And this is the one that was released in 2022 and sold out in zip point three seconds. And it's basically a four coin vanish using some incredible gaffes, some of my favorite gaffes of all time, uh, some different ways of using the gaffes, which I found very, very interesting. And what he's created is a very, very easy, almost self-working four coin vanish. If you're interested... Let's have a look at this live performance. Right, Matt. Matt. Yo. I'm going to show you a trick with four coins. That's coin number one. That's coin number two. That's coin number three. That's coin number four. Let me lay them out like this so you can see. <coughs> Sorry. Can you, no, that's okay. It's my fault. I shouldn't have asked you to help. Do you see the four coins there? I do. Watch this. If I take the four coins and I do this, do you know what that's called? Uh, a shimmy. No. It's just called waving my hand up and down. Oh, okay. But if I do it fast enough, I can actually create the illusion that the first coin just melts away. And when I say it melts away, I mean it really does just melt away. That's cool. It's not bad, is it? Let's see if we can do it again. Watch. You take the three coins, you put them in your hand, you wait a second, and when you do, <laughs> that leaves us with, with two. Look, there's two now. You can see I'm not I'm not lying. I'm not, you know, genuinely just two coins. That's cool. That's really cool. And, and notice my hands are empty. Every single time I do this, my hands are empty. Let me do it again. Are you ready? Watch. How many coins? <coughs> two. Are you dying? <coughs> no, I hope not. See the two coins? I do. All I have to do is snap. And now there's just one coin. Wow. I know it's amazing, right? The last coin is the hardest one. The lot. Do me a favor. Give my hand two taps. One hot, one cold. That's very good. And do you know what happens when you do the two taps? What? final coin vanishes and you're left with wow. absolutely nothing that's cool so that's the trick now what is it uh well basically it is what it is it's a uh it's it, it's it's well you just saw it it's a four coin vanish now you can get them in uh i picked up a set in walking liberties you can get silver dollars you can get uh you can get regular half dollars regular do there's so many different variations that you can get but in reality, what you have here is a four coin vanish. But what's really nice about it is there's almost no sleight of hand at all. You show the four coins individually, you then spread them out, and the first coin just vanishes. And you can show the other three if you want to. You then drop them into your hand and you make the second one vanish. You then show that you've got two left and you make the next one vanish. And then you make the final one vanish. I mean, it's that strong. It's that direct. It really is a very clever use of multiple gaps in order to be able to achieve this system. Now, when I watched, now the question is, would I do it? Well, I paid full price to get this. I paid like a couple of hundred quid to get this in Walking Liberties because I saw it and I was like, this would make an incredible opener because part of the challenge as a walk around, and that's the point here. I know when I was performing it, I threw a couple of them on the table, but you don't need to. The point of this is designed as a walk around routine. And one of the challenges as a walk around performer is trying to find material that will work in a walk around situation right? Uh, stuff that's quick and visual and grabs people's attention. Well, this is perfect. Imagine just coming out to somebody and saying, hey, I want to show you something with four coins. Watch, boom, one's gone, two's gone, three's gone, four's gone. It's so direct. Now think about how you would have to do that without gaffes. You'd have to show the four coins, palm one off, make it disappear, somehow ditch that, grab the other one. It'd be so much more complicated. 
And when you first go over to a group of people, you want it to be very direct. And that's what is. That's what this is. It's very direct and it's a very powerful way of doing a four coin vanish. I have played with many different ways of doing the four coin vanish. And this is one of the best ways that I've actually seen done. Um, the use of the gaffs and the way that Mark has actually created this and engineered it is brilliant. I remember him showing me this live at Blackpool on the Thursday before anyone was even open. And I was watching them and I was like, this is great. This is unbelievable. This is so good. I can't believe this. Oh man, this is, this is, this is great. And immediately I handed over my money. Now that part of that is because it's Mark Mason and he has a hypnotic effect on me. But the other half part of it is, this is just a bloody good trick. Ask yourself a question. If you're a coin worker, brilliant. If you're not a coin worker, you don't need to be a coin worker with this. There's hardly any palming. You know, you, there's hardly, there's, Hardly any palming. I'm trying to think. There's a ditch at one point, but there's hardly any, there's hardly any palming. You can do this without being, <coughs> excuse me, without being Danny Goldsmith. You can. It's that good. Um, and, and, you know, it'll establish credibility for you. You know, if you're opening at a, at a walk around situation and you're opening with a pack of cards and you're saying to somebody, pick a card, that's never a great situation to be in. If you're opening with a coin trick and you say, hey, I'm going to show you something with four coins. I'm going to make them disappear one at a time. Watch this. Well, now you're grabbing people's attention. I think this is really good. It's not cheap. There's various different prices points depending on the type of coins that you want. I wanted walking liberties, so it cost me a little bit more. But I love this. I'm going to give this 100%. This was my favourite trick out of the three. Um, it, I preferred it to the Shelby wallet. I preferred it to digital. I love this. And I think this is great. I think if, like I said, if you're not a coin worker and you want to throw a coin trick into your repertoire, this is perfect because you'll be able to do it straight away. Once you understand how the gaffes work, you'll be able to do it straight away. And Mark on the tutorial goes through a whole bunch of different things that you can do with it. He goes through a whole bunch of different routines, including a matrix style routine. Mark is an incredible teacher. He's an incredible explainer of magic and this is a perfect example of how good it is this is a hundred percent it's great i love it so there you go guys that's another review show special in the back do me a favor let me know what you think in the comments down below you want to see more videos like this you know what you got to do you just got to like the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below uh do you agree do you disagree let's get a dialogue going let me know in the comments down below and if you want to see more videos like this let me know in the comments down below Finally, if you haven't already joined the Netflix, please do so. A lot of people ask me every day, how can they support this channel? You can do so by trying out Netflix for a month. www.thenetrix.com. Basic level, bronze level, $14.99 a month. You've got access to over 400 tricks. Tutorials, slights, everything. The slight school is massive and continues to get bigger every single week. Let, it, let me know what you think. Go try it out. Let me know what you think. www.thenetrix.com. I'm going to be back again soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic TV.